Welcome to another Microsoft Access tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about DAO, or Database Access Object Library, in the Microsoft Access Suite. And you use D DAO in order to access data through the Visual Basic engines. And through its different definitions, you access the fields, the records, the tables, and are able to manipulate data just straight from VB code. The data access objects are arranged in mostly a hierarchy. First, you have the DB engine at the top. It is an ACE engine in Microsoft Access, and that, when you start Microsoft Access, automatically starts along with it. You don't actually have any methods associated directly with the DAO DB engine. You just start it up when you start Access. So underneath the DB engine is the workspace. Now workspaces can be, of course, the default database that just opened. That's an automatic a default workspace. But you can open other workspaces uh, from Oracle to uh, DB2 to any other access that has regular ODBC access and open their tables and refer to those fields and records as well. So the next space is the database. And under the database has all of your actual functions. So the database represents any open database. Like we said in the workspace, it could be the current database or it could be other databases that have been manually opened. You can then access the table definitions, the query definitions, the record sets, and relations and containers, which also contain other fields and documents. Not generally so much as the other things. In fact, generally you will work with the record sets more often than any other bit of code. At least that's been, been my experience. So the query defs allow you to access the fields, index, and indexes. The query definitions allow you to also access the fields, but it also uh, comes with it all of its parameters, which means that you can query objects through that part of the, the database engine. And then the record sets allows you to move between records. And what I want to show you now is, I'll open access here, and what I want to show you is a few examples of how those things are used and how you can move from record to record and actually manipulate data if you want to. So I'm going to double click on this mod um, module and I want to go down here to this second one here in the record set navigation. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that we will define the DAO.database and we'll give it a name. The DADB is going to be the, the database in particular. Then we have the record set, which is going to be defined as DARS. Okay, so we have a record set object and we have a database object. And now we'll set the database to the current DB. And that's a quick shortcut way to say we're going to work with the database that's loaded natively when you open up Microsoft Access. We're not going to open up an outside database through ODBC or anything like that. So in our record set, we're going to define the record set as opening a record set. The table is going to be customers. And then we'll give it the command to open that table. Okay, so we identify the table and we open the table. Okay, so this particular command, open record set, takes two arguments. Then we'll go and let's just output it. Let's just output the customer ID and the company. Okay, so that we're gonna see that in the immediate window. And then we're gonna play around a little bit. One of the commands is move next. The other command is move last. It'll move to the last record of the data set. And then we'll move previous to the last record and then we'll move back up to the first record. Now, this last entry here should be the same value as this first entry up here as we move to the first and we output that here. So let's see how that one runs. And we see that record one is fun zone, then record two is Exelon shop, and then we go back to the end, record 34, and then the previous one, record 33, and then back to record number one. So it did exactly what we expect to do. And you can see how quick and how simple 
it is to navigate from one record to the next. Now, between those, we could be doing something with the actual records. Like we could create a calculation, then we could output to that field and output a, a value into another field or update or send it to a report or do many different things. In fact, let's go ahead and go to our next example here where we're going to talk about beginning of file and end of file, okay? So we're going to have a, this subroutine that's going to establish end of file and beginning of file. And so if you don't know exactly the file number and you don't want to use the move last function, you can go ahead and just say, what's the end of the file and what's the beginning of the file? End of file and beginning of file are also very good for your for and next loops because you can go until EOF or end of file. And then you can go back to the beginning of file, so forth and so on. So here we're going to set the DB to the current DB and we're going to open a record set called S SQL. Now, what have we defined S SQL to be? Well, that's a, right up here. So the SQL here is a record set. So we're going to end up in the query def side of our database, and we're going to look at the data set being, the record set being a, a SQL command here. So the SQL command is going to look at table customers, and we have select star here. So it's going to just open all the fields to table customers, but it's going to establish some criteria. We're going to look at just the New York records, and then we're going to put it in order by company alphabetically, A to Z. Okay, so now we're going to open that record set, and the record set's going to be the S SQL. And then uh, it's going to be a dynamic data set. So we're going to open Dynaset rather than table. So this is how you refer to a query. And then, so if this beginning of file and that end of file, okay, if the beginning of file and end of file are the same record is what that's saying, then debug.print, no records. Okay, so we didn't find any records in New York is what that's basically saying. But if it gets past this and says, okay, do until the record set gets to the end of file. And so we'll, we'll output the company and we'll keep moving next and we'll keep looping until we hit that end of file indicator. And then we'll, we'll move on outside of the loop. And then we'll move to the last. And we're going to go ahead and go until the beginning of file. And then we're going to go to move previous. So we're going to go down the file and print it all. And then we're going to go up the file and print it all. And so this will be kind of interesting to see how that goes. So I'm going to go ahead and delete my immediate window data. And let's run this and see how it goes. Okay. And here we go. We got grandma's closet starting at the beginning and rocking and rolling all the way down here. And then we end up with Grandma's Closet again. And in the middle here, we got your favorite things, which must be the beginning and end of file. Both of them. Okay. So we started at the beginning. We moved to the, moved all the way to the end. It looped until end of file. Must have been one, two, three, four, five, six records. And then it did it backwards. Six records. Okay. So that's how we can navigate through using beginning of file and end of file as our loop indicators to end the loop after the work is done. So let's look at another one, this next one down here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to count the records. Uh, so we're going to establish a count. So we're going to go do while it's not the end of file. So it's going to keep on counting until it gets to the end of file. Then it's going to bounce out of the loop and close. Okay, so here it's going to basically just count the records. So let's look at how this one works. Let's put the cursor in there and run it and we get a looping through. And so we can count the records. So there's three examples for how you can loop through. Now I've used this kind of coding for a lot of different things. I had a, a large data set of well over a million records and I needed to parse through that and find out which records were active based on the data from another record set that I imported. So I bounced the data back and forth between those two. And I looped through just like this, looking for particular code that 
would allow me to know whether the record was active or inactive. And once I looped through, I got 24,000 records that met the criteria that I wanted. I output those 24,000 into another table, build a record set in another table, and then was able to use that record set in order to manage a data system that I had to manage. Many times you'll use this VBA coding in order to do things that you just can't do with an attached data set uh, to a form or even just a query. Um, a lot of times you need to bounce data against each other and you need to do it much quicker than a query can do it. And of course the VBA is, is your answer at that point. And a lot of this kind of data cleanup that I do when I manage systems at my current work is, is done in Access because I can pull data out, throw it in Access, and I can use the VBA code a lot of times to just crunch through it really quick and get the answers I need and then continue going forward to manage the master system that I, that I manage at work. So here's a quick overview of how we loop through records and how we move from record to record to do work that we need to have done. Hope this has been valuable to you and we'll look forward to seeing you again sometime. Thanks. I want to thank you so much for viewing this video. We have great content on, on the site and I'm putting more content out every single day. There's a link to one of them on the side of the screen over here. Also, please help me grow the channel by subscribing. So hit that subscribe button a little bit lower on the other side of the screen and hope to see you again. Thanks.